five, it wasn't. Who was at the last uh, meetup that I gave a talk? Okay, good. So you remember what we talked about? <laughs> because this will build on that. And it assumes that you know the basics, although those were pretty much basics. So I think even you'll, if you weren't there that time from that talk, you should be able to follow. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't really call this advanced. There are some elements that are going to be advanced, but I would just call it beyond basics. Uh, maybe we'll have some time at a later date to do some more advanced stuff. Um, okay, so yeah, my name's Chris. Yeah, that's me. Um, so once again, for those who weren't there last time, um, I'm a managing director, and I'm one of the managing directors, and um, software engineer at Kinfolk. We're a small company based here in Berlin. Um, I'm one of the less active uh, Rocket developers. Um, my colleagues are a lot more active on that. Um, and I'm a former GNOME maintainer, so if you're running GNOME System Monitor, you can see my name in the about box. Um, yeah, and that's how to talk about you on know, GitHub or Twitter. So yeah, Kinfolk, we're actually really fortunate to have some really good clients. We work with um, CoreOS, uh, a company called Endless, and a company called Weaveworks. Um, for CoreOS, we work on Rocket. Um, Endless, uh, they build small, um, very affordable computers, and we were uh, able to help them with their image, um, uh, getting their images to the computers in a reliable way. Um, their operating system images. Um, and then we worked, we helped them with scope. So, uh, so we're going to start, but before, so if you were here last time, I gave the announcement, I'll do that once more. Um, in the end of September, there's going to be a conference for a system D. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of system D users here. Uh, and so if you want to learn more about it or you want to kind of drive, help drive that technology, that's a really good place to go. Um, this year is, we're also having a workshop session. So this is for people who, um, it's kind of targeted people who are just getting into system D, need to maybe, um, um, you know, um, would, would be uh, helped by getting some hands-on assistance there. And so that'll be given by um, some of the um, system D community members. Um, and then we have the presentations for two days and then the hack fest for the last day. And that's all in Berlin at Beta House. Um, yeah, so please come and get tickets, uh, submit talks. Uh, yeah, the CFP is finished at the first of August. Okay, so back to the talk. Um, so this is the first time I'm giving this talk. Uh, and so we're gonna be stumbling through this, uh, probably, uh, kind of like everybody does their job. Uh, so please help me if you see something uh, I'm doing wrong. And if you have questions, please interrupt me and we'll try to address those. Um, so the plan is we're going, last time I mentioned that there are multiple flavors um, for that you can run your apps in. Um, stage one flavors, so stage one is basically the runtime environment that your application runs in. Um, and so the general one everybody knows is the container runtime. Sets up namespaces, um, C groups, um, uh, stuff like that. Um, there's also a KVM, um, one that I mentioned last time, and then there's one called Fly, where there's actually no container. And I'll show running those, and I'll show kind of what the differences are for those. Um, we'll also look at the networking stuff, and how that works in Rocket. And then we'll look at volumes and how to build your data. Um, and then we'll look um, shortly at isolators. And so this is how you limit access to resource usage. Um, most people, are, um, you know, if I say isolators or res resource usage, you probably understand that as being something like limiting CPU or limiting memory, and that's exactly what that is, um, or network bandwidth. Um, but you can also limit the access that, a, that an application has in the container, even though it's running as root. Um, and then we'll look, uh, if we have time, at running containers with systemd. Okay, so yeah, so we call them flavors, the different types of state ones. Um, so, this is your general um, con container, your core OS and your host flavors. So the core OS flavor, when you build Rocket, uh, the default build gives you an image. Um, when you don't give it any parameters, it will build, your container will be, um, set up in a, what we call the core OS image, because it's based on um, their images. However, if you install, install this from, uh, from your distribution, 
then you'll probably be getting the host um, flavor. The host flavor just means that it uses the tools that are already provided on your system. Um, so Fedora, Debian will be using that. And as you can see here, we have the, you, know, you have your operating system, then you have Rocket, and then Rocket will start the container, and it uses systemd and spawn to do that, to set up the namespaces, the C groups, all that. And then of course, systemd uh, runs inside of there. So you, have, you probably have systemd outside of your system, and then inside of the container as well. And as I pointed out last time, this is a big difference um, with the philosophy of Docker. So because Docker is designed for running single apps. If you want to run multiple apps, you have to have something like Supervisor B running there. Um, but we have System B running a container by default. This means if you want to run multiple apps, it's supported out of the box. And we'll demonstrate that a bit if we have time. And so this is exactly what it would look like. You have two apps just running under System B, and you see they're in a CH root. Um, but you also have other kind of isolation. The CH root is not enough. Um, you have um, also mount namespaces, which are a stronger CH root. And of course, network namespaces and all kinds of namespaces. Um, so we're back to the single one, which we'll focus on. But we also have one called LKVM. LKVM is basically a fully, uh, yeah, it's a um, hardware um, isolated uh, virtual machine. Um, however, it's, it's optimized for running Linux guests on Linux hosts. And so it's rather fast. Um, and you can see here, what you have another, when you launch the rocket command, you don't have system D and spawn, you have a KVM running, it starts a, a full kernel, and then you have system D running in there. Um, so, yeah. And then we have kind of the opposite of that. So the container one on, the, on your left is, uh, that's you know standard container isolation. Um, but then you have the hardware virtual machine isolation, uh, which is um, pretty much, I don't think anybody's working on that, uh, as far as um, yeah, the KVM itself. Um, but then you have uh, Fly, which is kind of completely opposite, because you have no isolation whatsoever. Um, well, you have a CH root, but that's easy to work out of. Um, and that's actually good when you want to use the other features of Rocket, like the image fetching, the um, putting your applications, the image distributing them, things like that. Um, and um, for example, the, if you're running Kubernetes and you want to use rocket containers, um, there are some components that need to have full access to the system, and so they need to run and fly. Uh, so we're gonna actually demo time. This is where things all fall apart. Okay, so I'm gonna use my command history, so hopefully, uh, yay, it turned out. Okay, so, Actually, I think it's probably better if we run a standard, um, a standard container first. So we're gonna get rid of that, and we're gonna run interactive. That means we're gonna jump inside of it and be able to do stuff. We're not really gonna do much, but it'll be good for. Oops. Okay, so we're inside of here. We're isolated. Um, if you do ps, of course, you only have, you know, a few processes. Um, but we can actually look and see how that looks. Over here, another one. Um, if we do, for example, uh, oh, we can do this. It's a little messy, but I think it'll be able to see it. Uh, right here, we have yeah. So, oops. So we have our stage one, which was set up by um, it's basically based on this one. And then you have system B, and then you have your um, yeah. We have basically just sleep running inside, but it's not doing anything. Um, you can also use a system D tool to see this. Um, what is it? Yes. Yeah, you can see that. I think I have another one running actually. One second. Yeah. Oops, that's inside there. By the way, my colleague's right here, so he's going to be shouting out instructions. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so I've got something, right? I'm going to actually, uh, so you can actually just watch me do this. Um, if we want to stop these, we can just go over here. But type this probably faster. Can this be okay? 
and it, um, you just have to pass in the name portion. Um, and what you have though, you have, a, you have a number of defaults. And so we're going to show running the defaults, and then we're going to show one example of running of something with a configuration file that we define. Um, so yeah, this is how you do it on the command line. You give it a dash dash net, and you give it the name of the um, plugin config, the plugin config name. And so the first one we're going to just look at is none. You can imagine what this does. Any guesses? Okay. It does nothing as far as networking goes. When you're inside that, you just have a loopback device, and you try to do any network, um, any action using the network is not going to work. Um, as far as the channel size. Um, and then you have the default one. Now this is a peer-to-peer a, <coughs> a -peer, um, connection, or one-to-one -one connection. Um, and, oh actually, sorry, yeah, this is the default. And so, look down here, there's, there's one called PTP where you can actually define it, um, so your, the parameters yourself. But if you run just without even the .NET, the dash dash .NET, you'll get the default, or you can specify it. Um, and um, this is basically what it will give you. Um, and then you also have the host, which basically, so containers, we've mentioned namespaces before, so what, what this is doing actually, your pod is in its own um, um, networking namespace, and so it can't see the rest of the, the host's networking, um, um, no host networking devices, and so that's why you have this, um, you, know, you have this uh, pair of sockets that can between each other, one inside, one outside. Um, but when you're on the host, when you have no isolation from the network, it uses the same, um, you can use the net equals host, and then it's using the same network namespace. Um, maybe good for testing, probably not what you want to run in production. Um, and then this is the P2P, so this is the exact same image as the default, and the actual configure, the JSON configuration for that looks like this. And so um, basically, this is how simple it is to configure a network plugin. Now, this is one example. Some of them are shorter, some of them are a bit longer. Let's get more detailed here. Um, but yeah, you're just sitting here. Um, I, you also have an IP um, uh, uh, assignment management. Okay, yeah. What does the IP stand for again? IP assignment management. Okay, whatever. Anyway. It takes care of uh, getting the IPs. Uh, yeah. Address. Address management, yes. Uh, okay, and then you can also set up bridges. Now, this is useful for, of course, um, connecting between uh, two, two pods. Um, so you can have the same configuration. Um, if you basically give it the same bridge, if you connect to the same bridge on the outside, you can actually connect the two pods. Actually, I was going to do a demo, but it looks like a little. I, I, we'll maybe do it at the end. Let's run through this. Um, I'll do more demos, but um, some of the demos I'll save if we have time. Um, but basically, this is how you set up the uh, running, um, connecting the two, uh, two pods together. Um, and then you have things like Mac VLAN and uh, IP VLAN. Mac VLAN, you'll get, you can assign a MAC address to each. Um, and IP VLAN, you can, each pod has, a, has its own IP address. Um, Actually, we will run some, so I did want to do some things here, so let's see what we have. Okay, so this is actually a, okay, so here we have, we have the same busy box image, and we're going to set up um, the, we have this thing called BridgeNet, that is the name of the, we have a, a file, which is probably better to show, let's do cat. Rocket <laughs> bridge. So that's what this looks like. And this is basically, this one is emulating the default point to point um, as far as the way it's set up right now. Um, but we can also, yeah. So, so what this does when you run it, let's get back over here. We're going to run it. Okay. So we can see, we can ping to the outside. That ain't gonna work. 
Because we haven't set up DNS. Let's do that. Oh, hold on. We did set up DNS. Does this one actually have DNS set up? Can I try something? I told you we were going to stumble through this one. associate this volume with that data, uh, or that no point name. Um, and then we have the kind. Um, now, we have, you can use host or you can use empty. Host is used when you want to um, mount a directory on the outside. But you can also have two images that want to share something uh, between themselves, but not expose that to the outside. And that's when you use empty. And so we have this concept of you know, um, rocket sports out of the box running multiple apps in a pod. And so that's a part of that and how you basically can share data between those applications. Um, and then of course here's the place you get the, um, the outside of the container on, your, on the host system. Yeah, well, we're not there yet. We're gonna do a demo of this then. Um, oh, actually, you know what I all right, I have my mount example. That sounds promising. All righty. That's actually, you know what, we'll just jump to this one. Uh, this was actually one, this is a really, really long, uh, really, really long uh, command. However, I should actually show you that it's actually quite interesting to do this sometimes. And I'll actually, we'll go by and we'll actually talk about this because this demonstrates a few things. Um, so, what does it demonstrate? So we have, um, here, we have the volume portion of it. Oh, by the way, what this is actually doing is running two images and putting them in the same pod. Um, and we're going to be actually using the 
uh, so we have two different images. We have the mount example ACI that I created, and then we have a um, uh, Alpine ACI. Everybody knows Alpine Linux is basically a really good starting point if you're building your container images. Um, and this is just running a shell. Um, but and they're both running sleep for 5,000 seconds. Um, so let's run this and see if it actually works. Okay, so yeah, it's working. And now we're going to do a rocket list. And we'll see that in our rocket list, um, we have, let me make it smaller. This is nicer. Okay, so what we have here, we have, um, whenever you're running multiple applications in a, um, in a pod, then you'll see that it's still, we're going to make this a little smaller, so it's going to be, Okay, you'll see here you have an empty line on the far side because the UUID is actually for the pod. Um, and then we have the app can be identified by its name inside of it. And so what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go, let me make this bigger again. Um, we're going to say rocket, enter, and then we're going to go into, um, what are you going to do? So we have to, what's the OD3, is that correct? What is OD3? So that's the UID, and then we have to tell which, um, which app. So that's uh, gonna be mount example. And then we have to tell it what to run, and you don't have to do any exact thing, you can just say bin, and then we're just gonna run sage. Oops, of course. I need to do sudo. Oops. Hmm. O3, OD3. Yeah. <coughs> Pod contains. Yeah, for. So you have yeah. have the inputs. No, the, you need to put the, the UID up to work. Right here, okay. The yeah, app local. Okay, anybody want to do a pull request for that? It looks like low hanging fruit. <laughs> okay, so this uh, this actually is how you enter a running uh, a running pod. Uh, okay, and so we're inside here now. And actually, if we look at our, oh, I should have probably done this portion. Let me see. Um, I should have probably done AC build. This is actually show you how we built it. We added a mount point here. You know, when we build images last time, we this is the basically the steps to build the image. And the third from the bottom here is the mount add data opt data. So we're going to look inside of there uh, from here. So this is where we are, right? Oh, where we go. Okay, so we're going to look inside of opt. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very minimal environment. Um, so I have a, and that's in my hosts file too. So if I do um, home, Chris, dad, you know, um, demo, I think it's called. You'll see that I have ACD here. If I go, um, oops. Um, oh, you get the idea. Trust me, it, it works. Uh, we don't have so much time here. But yeah, you can make a change there. And you'll, actually, it's easier to do this, actually. Uh, so it's easier to go. Ah, forget it. We don't have as much time. I want to show a couple other things. Um, but yeah, basically what we have, we have... Actually, no, that was actually what we wanted to do. So let's go into this. So this is actually the running... Um, that was the running one. So let's actually go in here. We're already here anyway. So we can do touch. Uh, well, now we're in the container here. So I'm gonna. Uh, okay. And so now from outside, we should be able to see that. Uh, but that's not all. We have more. Um, we wanted to get into the. 
So that's actually, we're going to get out of this container. Remember, that was like that. We want to go into the other one and see that that's actually shared. So this is called caps. from the other uh, so that's the data from the other containers perspective we saw that we linked those up now we so we still actually have this so we did the, the list right here now the cool thing is you don't have this that, that command was really 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 long Do you have a couple minutes yeah sure like that command was really 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 long you can actually get that because it generated actually a um, a um, JSON file that will actually define how we ran that. And so we don't, if we do it one time, we find, hey, that works really, really well. I think I'll use that as a starting point, at least. Um, we can actually run, uh, I think I need to run sudo, I don't know. That's my good. Huh? That's my good. You are right. Yeah. So what we can do, So we have the description of running that right here. Um, and I've actually, and what we can do, we can actually put this into a file. Um, my JSON, right? So it's right here in my, oh, I'm not really where I thought it was, but that's okay. It should still work. Uh, where are we? We're running this. So that's stopped now. If we do a rocket list, we can see that it's no longer running. Everything is exited. Um, so if we want to do sudo rocket, oops. what's that? Oh yeah. Huh? So now we ran the exact same thing. Um, but not with that really long, uh, man, uh, clumsy fingers. Um, yeah, so we're running the same thing. You see running, it's running mount example and caps retain just with a different UID. Um, so that's actually kind of a, when you're kind of figuring out things, it's kind of sometimes easier to do on the command line with these, sometimes get really long, and then you can just make a nice JSON file, which actually is much nicer when you're doing your, um, you know, putting in a version or control um, repository. Uh, okay, I had other things to talk about, but uh, I don't think we have time for this. I'll just run through this real quick. I won't do any demos, I promise. Um, so you have two types of isolators. Um, you define these in the um, image manifest, um, or the plot manifest, right? Which one? The other? You know, yeah, both. Yeah. Exactly. So we have two types. We have resources. A resource is something that can be consumed, like a memory, CPU, we talked about that, bandwidth. Um, but the thing that people don't think about is actually a way to limit the access of a web application. Um, so Linux traditionally had this two concepts. You were either privileged, um, that means root, or super user, um, or you were an unprivileged user. Um, of course, unprivileged users were restricted with what they could do, um, and super users were not. And so capabilities adds another layer of that. And um, so you can turn elements of these privileges off, even for super user, which is very important when you're running in containers and actually the application is running as root inside of the container. So sometimes you want to actually also minimize that. That's also another approach to security. You can um, let the app only do what it should do, what it's intended to do. And um, you can do this by, uh, oh, that was the other part. Okay, so I didn't have any, a slide for that. Um, um, yeah, okay, we can 
Maybe another day we can go a little further, but actually there's a lot more to talk about. Uh, so actually I didn't know the demos would take so long. Uh, but thanks for listening. I hope that actually gave a little more insight. Uh, and thanks for thanks for listening. Yeah. Questions? Thank you, Chris. It was really, really amazing, and I really appreciate the cool demos. I hope you all know that uh, live coding is not always uh, so easy, but yeah, it went really, really good time. Like, really amazed. Uh, yeah, Q&A. If somebody wants to ask a question, I will come with the mic, because we are recording, and it would be better to have it on tape. Yeah. Yeah. I can also repeat. Hey, thanks for your talk. Uh, is it possible to run Rocket level, to configure Rocket with uh, YAML instead of JSON because everything is JSON? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Patches, maybe more. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, no. I, it's just JSON right now, as far as that stuff goes. Um, yeah. There is talk about having different output formats with things like lists. Stuff, but uh, I don't know about the. Because that's actually um, a project now that CN, especially if you're talking about the CNI stuff, um, that's a project now that's actually used by multiple um, um, things like Kubernetes, for example. And so, yeah, you know, maybe they want it, people work on it, but yeah, we haven't. Nobody's asked for it yet. Okay. Or at least not asked far enough for it to actually file a PR or, or uh, issue. Yeah, it's a minor thing. Yeah. Thanks. What actually? There was one? Yeah, a long time ago. The idea was to... A long, long time ago. ...was to create a tool that converts YAML to the JSON and then run it and just use that. Okay, yeah, so, so there was a, a talk about having a tool that converted YAML to JSON and then running it from that, so yeah. Kind of like what we do with Docker images, because you know, you can run the Docker images with Rocket and it just converts it on the fly to uh, um, the native format, the ACI image. Any more questions? Who actually tried? I have a who actually tried Rocket since we since uh, we talked last? Did anybody? Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to talk to us about your experience, we'd like to hear. And uh, yeah, if you have issues with it, just put them on uh, the issue tracker on, on GitHub. And, uh, we'll be happy to respond. Yeah. Chris, thank you for the talk and thanks for bringing this amazing technology. Thank you. Thank you.